I'm Katrina. And I'm Jack. And this is Portals to Hell. Enter the Underworld. For this investigation, we're going to Emerald Hill House, which is in Monongahela, Pennsylvania. This was a unique investigation for us because it was the first time I've ever investigated, and um, dare I say Katrina as well, mm -hmm. it was a haunted, haunted house, meaning that it's a year-round haunted house attraction that just so happens to be haunted. The owners, Chris and Veronica, they, they've had a pretty interesting go at that place. I mean, mm -hmm. the cool thing too that I liked about it, it's like we were on like a history quest as well. Yes, because there were so many rumors surrounding this property. So, you know, I think our main quests were, okay, what can we document? What can we validate for them? But also, what history can we actually back up? Originally, it was a house and as a mansion, and many families lived through there. And at some point, a man named Billy McHugh took over, and his idea was to change it over into a haunted attraction. According to Chris and Veronica, Billy did have experiences. Uh, I've been here for 16 years. Okay, so I'm sure in 16 years, you've had your fair share of uh, weirdness? Well, actually, not until I owned it. First 12 years, uh, nothing at all. And what about the, the, that owner at that time? Were they experiencing things? Yes, yes. He couldn't, he couldn't even spend the night in the house. But Chris always kind of chalked it up to that it was just, you know, BS, to be honest. He thought he was just making it up to get business through the door. So Chris never put any stock into these claims until he took ownership. Anything seen in here? Actually, yes. Uh, I was in another room working. All the cabinet doors in here blew open at once. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you heard it? Oh, yeah, you could hear it. It was a heck of a noise. It really was. Wow. The rumor is that a witch named Carla lived on the property, and she was, I guess, like kicked out. And because of that, she cursed the land and anybody who would be on it. So we looked into it, and we never found any witch named Carla. We believe that's 100% rumor. What we did find, though, is there was a family connected to this property. So there's a lot of rumors about this place, mm -hmm. obviously, right? And it's kind of interesting because the one that I totally, right off the bat, I'm like, Ugh, totally a rumor. Um, actually has some merit to it. Which one's that? The witch. Okay. You know, going through the deeds and everything, there was a family named the Colvins. Mm -hmm. There was a Josephine and a Moses. They were married. Mm -hmm. Josephine and Moses are buried in a local cemetery here. What's really weird is that they have this headstone with their, their surname with a witch's broom on it. Guess who owned the house? The Colvins. The Colvins. This one was a tough one to, to, to crack because there was so much information to go through and going back to try and find property deeds back to the 1600s and stuff like that. I think, you know, this one is more, you know, investigation heavy as opposed to some of the other places we've been to is because we really are one of the first people to go there and investigate this space. And, you know, we're working with Chris and Veronica, who they as owners have never had investigators come through. There's a lot of experiences that they've had that they've never shared before publicly. And again, there's all these rumors surrounding this property because it is a business that yeah. makes their money based off of these rumors, you know? So it was really like, you know, we have to get to the bottom of this. We have to do this justice. And there's so much ground to cover. It's, it's actually a very large house. And and it's like every room somebody's had an experience. Yeah. So it became really important for us to document everything that we did. For me, there were two real standout moments being on that property. The first was when I did the walkthrough by myself. I just, I hated it so much. Oh. Okay, um, I just got head to toe just, it's still going, shooting up and down me cold, like, oh, like to the core cold. This is insane. And then when I did an EVP recording, and once again, I started getting the, the tapping. All right, let's play it back. Are you upset that people disrespect your home? <laughs> oh my God. It's trying to say something. Something is so trying to come through. Have I got the chills right now? Are you scared of us? Or do you choose to be him? Do you want the haunted house? 
dude. I was essentially wrapping up. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning and we were getting ready to go. And I was like, ah, give me like half hour. Let me do this. And it was easily the best EVP recording session we had the entire series. I agree. Those experiences for me, those were my takeaways was when we walked through the building by ourselves because you really got a sense for what it was like to you know, be an employee, to be somebody that worked there. Yeah. And you had to go through those rooms in, in the dark by yourself, not knowing what's around the corner. Whoa, what the f Is that me? Okay. You really got that sense of fear. Yeah. Um, and it's also your recording, which is really interesting because every single question you got that tapping. And it never interrupted my questions. It was a weird one. That's... And, it, and it seemed to corroborate a lot of the history that we were finding. That's the other thing. Like if we had just gone with the rumors and was like, oh, all of it's true, that recording wouldn't have made any sense to no. us. For me, I've kind of forgotten about all the other stuff just because <laughs> the most significant part for me was the EVP at the end. Yeah, I agree. You kind of, because you know, when, when nothing's, when you're not really getting amazing results, you're just kind of like, all right, whatever, on to the next thing. Like, what's gonna, what's gonna provide us with results? Oh, wait, the EVP. And so that's where kind of all my focus goes. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of takeaways we gave Chris and Veronica. Oh, Number one, time. we were able to validate the experiences that they've been having for the last 10 years and let them know you're not crazy. You know what? This stuff is happening. It happened to us. We experienced some weird things and here's some history to back it up. And that's the thing. They wanted that. They didn't want to keep these rumors going. If, if it was rumor, they're fine using it for their business, but they also wanted to let people know it's just rumor. Mm -hmm. Like here are the facts because they know they have people coming in there who are interested in just the facts. So yep. they very much wanted that and we were able to give them that. It was so steeped in so much history and there were so many kind of strange turns that we had to kind of work through. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it was a maze. And we also, for me, I got some of the most profound evidence I've, I've ever had when it's come to investigating the paranormal. So I loved it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to more Portals to Hell and behind the scenes action at Travel Channel Go.